I tried Apple News Plus a couple of years back when it was first launched. But recently, a family member subscribed to it again, and I thought to check it out. I have tried it on the iPhone, iPad, and MacBook, but I'm really mostly going to focus on the iPad. $13 a month for family sharing isn't bad at all, especially when you do have the six members that are going to be using it, which is not the case in my scenario, but it's still not bad, at least based on the promise of 300 plus magazines and newspapers. The app has a simple sidebar where you can navigate to different parts. You can rearrange, delete, and store items on the sidebar. I wish I could hide certain sections because deleting all suggestions just so I don't see them feels like too much work. You can toggle the sidebar, which moves it to the top to get more room to work with, but it's not that important when you have a big iPad or a big screen. And even though the toolbar is floating, it's actually not floating over your content. And that is something I always appreciate. Always, always appreciate. But in this mode, there aren't enough navigation options, so you'll find yourself going back to the sidebar, so it might actually be pointless toggling it in the first place. The magazine catalog is organized in alphabetic order, making it easy to find your magazines. Um, when I first tried this on the iPhone, it wasn't organized in order, so that might have been a bug because when I went back later, it was organized in alphabetic order. So, yeah. The magazine covers are beautiful, but do they have to be this big though? I mean, this is a 13 inch iPad screen but I can only fit six titles at a time. That is too little. You're going to be here a while, especially if you just want to go through them, all of them, for the first time, perhaps. Um, there is no option to make these thumbnails smaller or turn them into lists. But seriously, on the iPad, they don't need to be this big. You can search through your channels, topics, and stories. The app groups your results into these different categories, which is decent. Now that is definitely a faster way to navigate the app. When you find titles you like, adding them to your channels and topics is quite easy. There is really a lot of navigation options, but there is room for improvement. The New Scientist is my all-time favorite magazine. I was very excited to see it in Apple News Plus, and that made me want to start following its issues again. At the top of the screen, you have the different topics that the magazine covers. And one thing that surprised everyone in the family is that Apple News Plus does not remove ads from your magazine. We just assumed since this is a subscription that ads wouldn't show, but after some brief deliberation, we actually realized that probably $13 a month is not enough to remove ads. The ads are not too much, so that is not a problem at all. The text in your magazine can be very big. Or tiny depending on your preferences i think the range is quite decent you can bookmark articles that you like and even share them with others you're not just limited to reading articles others have videos that you can watch and audio you can listen to
The video playback has some basic features for fast forwarding and rewinding. And I found the audio articles a bit difficult to find on the iPad. By far, my favorite part of Apple News Plus is the puzzles that I completely suck at. Does not change the fact that I enjoy attempting to solve them. I love how easy it is to move through the different parts. On your mini puzzles, Apple has made this quite intuitive. I also like the fact that it can reveal your answers without thinking too much about how to go about it. So that was very easy to do. And I thought that was supposed to be a vowel. I guess not. You can even change the mode you solve these in. And that is definitely something you don't get on paper. These are the small little details that get me excited about going paperless. Because there's just some things you can't do on paper that you can easily do in apps. How amazing is that? I don't like that the app congratulates me even though I haven't filled the puzzle myself. The app knows that I have revealed all the answers so I think that, you know, maybe it shouldn't be congratulating people that have not actually done any work. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see the answers and I'm hoping that I will do better next time. But it doesn't help when they say, oh, congratulations, you are number 38 in the world or whatever. Going through this puzzle, it turns out, I wasn't even reading the questions the right way around, in the right directions. So you have mini crosswords and you also have full ones, which I always dread to try and do. I managed to solve one mini crossword once and it meant the world to me because I solved it all by me onesie. I can't find it to show you guys, which I would have loved to because, you know, it's an achievement on my part. I don't know about everybody else, but I would have loved to keep that one. It's not every day I complete a crossword, even a miniature one. So instead of archiving all the crosswords for the month, it would probably be nicer to save the ones we attempted or the ones that we like that we save to make this a little bit more personal. The last puzzle type you get is core tiles. These puzzles are also fun to do on the MacBook. You get the same experience you have on iPad with the Mac, which is kind of cool. On the iPhone, all your articles are easier to access than they are on the iPad. I really dislike the inconsistencies in Apple apps. Instead of puzzles, you get an audio tab instead. You can change the playback speed. And you have pretty much everything you need to listen to the latest news on the go. While it probably makes sense to listen on the iPhone, I think it's equally useful on the iPad as well. And it just helps to have the same thing across all the apps. If you like sports, Apple Notes got you covered. Even fantasy sports. On the Mac, the app feels pretty much the same as it does on the iPad. Nothing stands out. Is it worth it? Unfortunately for me, no. It's nice that I got to experience this, but I wouldn't subscribe to it. The person who initiated this from my family won't be subscribing again next month because he wanted to access Bloomberg. Which still requires a subscription of $35 a month, even in Apple News Plus. So he's better off just going to Bloomberg directly. And that is what cut this fun journey short. It would be very interesting to find out how many magazines are affected this way in Apple News Plus because I thought that the whole concept behind the app was that it can offer cheaper subscriptions than going to individual publishers. But when you really think about it, you probably only want one that matters. In my case, that is the new scientist. So why not just get that one? What do you guys think? Do let me know.